What's up hustlers? It's your boy JT Hustles back again with another video. And today I just want to share with you my advice to someone who wants to work their 9 to 5 but be a part-time entrepreneur, maybe just do something on the weekends and just being realistic, they're only trying to make an extra 500 to $1000 a month and let's get into it. There's something else to die for. Spend a day to get my mind blown. Dress it up and go to NASA. 200 miles on the dash. Got a roller pound up a gas. Switch the lanes in the Grand Rapids. We the one that kept it cool with all these niggas till these niggas start acting. Shoot a nigga like a film in a movie, nigga. Go and let them have it. We ballin' like the Marsh Madness. All these cops shoot a nigga track. Alright, you guys. Please be sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel if you're new. And my advice for somebody that wants to make an extra $500 to $1,000 a month by working for themselves only on the weekends is to become a reseller. And just like if you watch some of my other videos, I try to be uh, detailed um, when I can just to show you that I've done this myself. I've been um, reselling stuff for a ton of years but actively seriously making it uh, another income stream for myself it's been about a month now that I've been taking it that serious so I would say that the first thing you need to do is research because there's going to be a learning curve because you don't know what you're doing you need to find out um, you know what do you like to sell is there good profit margins in the used version of that product or do you know where to source that product at brand new at a price where you can resell it and where can you resell that product after you pay retail price or whatever your price is for it what it'll still turn a profit so the first thing you need to do is research um, what exactly you want to sell let's take the example that you do your research and you say electronics have a high um, profit margin uh, and, and more specifically let's say you like mobile devices so like tablets cell phones so that's what you want to sell you researched it so you know what brands are popular you know what used brand still has good resale and now you're thinking about where to source it my advice to you would be um, sometime throughout your work week, Monday through Friday, assuming you work five days a week, full time, um, one afternoon at the work or during your lunch break or whenever you get time, research all the flea markets in your area that you're willing to drive to on a Saturday. So let's say it's at least three, let's say it's one in your city and it's a couple more, you know, within an hour radius of your city that you wouldn't mind driving to. And you don't have to do all of this in one weekend. You can go to a different one every weekend or however you want to do it. But just keeping it real simple, let's say you find three flea markets that you're willing to drive through and check out. Um, you go to the local flea market, you show up very early. This is a key that I've learned by mistake that I want to share with you guys. If you can show up kind of early while people are still setting up and you see that they have a product that you feel like will resell very well um make an offer on it right then and there you can ask them how much they want for it they'll tell you and then you can negotiate down from there you know i've seen that work as well but what i personally have done is i would just make an offer lower than what I'm willing to pay for it because it's a flea market and at flea markets there's a lot of haggling going on so let's say I see um that they have an iPhone 7 with a cracked screen and I know that those sell very well across different platforms or I just know somebody personally that would be willing to buy that phone and let's say that the screen is like completely smashed and you know but this table is selling uh, broken phones and cell phone cases and they got some new phones and screen protectors and you know they just got all kind of random electronics that they got laid out just trying to make a couple of bucks and I'll just walk up to the table and I'll be like man 
I like that phone, man, but it's 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 beat up pretty bad, man. Like, can I give you three bucks for it? They might be like, ah, oh, nah, man, that's a such and such phone. All it needs is a new screen. I'm, I'm trying to get at least, you know, $25, $30 out of it. And you'll be like, man, you know, just I'm not going to go through the whole haggling process. You already know how that goes. Let's say you guys settle on a price around $15. Now you got a cracked phone. How can you sell a cracked phone? Well, you can go through the and do more research and find a place where you could probably instantly flip that phone for more through an online platform, whether it be uh, eBay, Amazon, Macari, Craigslist, OfferUp, LetGo. You know the list goes on. Those are just a few, and um, and just straight up flip it, or you might know a local place where they fix electronics or you might know somebody that can fix electronics personally if all else fails um you do a little research and you find out about iCracked or iCracked.com and you can either learn how to fix it yourself or just hire a tech to come out and fix it let's say all in all you spend 30 to 40 dollars fixing the phone but then now you have an iPhone 7 all it needed was the screen replaced and now you sell it for 90 to 100 bucks through you know various platforms you know I'm a big fan of cross listing everything so listed on eBay listed on Amazon listed on Macari listed on Craigslist offer up you know and um and do your research on your products because some things you can't sell on these platforms um and there's some things that don't make sense for you to sell on these platforms if that makes sense for example you probably can list your house for sale on eBay I wouldn't recommend that you list your house for sale on eBay so just because it'll let you write the post and list it that doesn't make um, you know it a wise decision to do and I know that's a pretty extreme example but um just do your research and just know that wherever you're putting it make sure that that's the proper distribution channel for your product distribution is maybe the most underrated thing I see new entrepreneurs do they'll go all in on developing the best product that they ever thought of or the best service they ever thought of and then once all of that is done now they're worrying about distribution so you can have the best product or service but if nobody knows where to get it from guess how many sales you're gonna have zero that's how many sales you're gonna have if nobody knows about it you can't sell it to them because they don't know it exists so I advise a lot of new entrepreneurs to research distribution first so if I had to put this in a particular order I would say find out what you're gonna sell find out the best distribution channel for that source the product cleaning and fix it is you know if if needed clean it fix it then list it resell it so getting back to the point though that's just one example but pretty much at flea markets there are a lot of used stuff um you do you can do really well selling used clothes on eBay it's a ton of other youtubers that make content and have great eBay stores and all they do is go to like thrift stores and flea markets and buy used clothes and clean them up and take pictures of them and sell them on eBay and they make a full-time living off of it but if you want to keep your nine to five maybe you know you enjoy what you do you make good money you got good benefits a combination of all of that whatever the case is if you just wanted to make five hundred to a thousand dollars a month which you know you're not getting rich and keep your full-time job but that extra income would help you out I would go early Saturday morning like at a time where I kind of feel like most of the people are there setting up and 
even maybe a little bit later than that so they can have a little bit of their stuff set up so I can kind of gauge to see the vibe of their table if it looks like a bunch of junk is on the table then you know there, there might be a gem here or there but you know if you could see the table and they got a lot of stuff brand new in the packages like in its cell phone cases or toys or um, electronics or you know whatever it is that you're interested in make an offer on it it's a good feeling for them to make a sale as they're setting up because psychologically they'll just be pumped like man I'm getting sales already and I don't even have everything out the gate and somebody just came and made me an offer worked out a deal made money right there today's gonna be a good day and in all honesty it might be a great day for them or you might be their only sale of the day but you showing up early and you know making that offer and working that deal getting something at the price point where considering the condition of it if you have to make repairs or clean it that it still will be resale after you do so or if you grab something that has immediate resale value as is you still talk to yourself into a good deal so I can get into more detail with that um in future videos if you want me to but I'm actually sitting outside I got an appointment I have to run into um, real quick and knock out this meeting always grinding so just like I tell you guys to all my hustlers stay hustling I'm gonna keep doing the same and don't forget um, early in the morning I don't even think I finished this train of thought I'm in such a big hurry but wanted to make this content so let's say early Saturday morning real quick um, you can rewind and rewatch this video if I put this out too fast early Saturday morning you go to one of your flea markets or a couple of your flea markets whatever you feel comfortable doing you source the products that you researched or the type of products because uh, you might not can't find the exact cell phone case or the exact um, toy that you want to resell but you know the type um, generally speaking and you have your cell phone charged up and you have that with you so you can do on-the-spot research that is also very important if you don't know how to do on-the-spot research with your cell phone you can google it you can watch other videos about it you can comment below and I can make a video for you guys to do that but it's very important that you guys make educated decisions especially if you're doing anything as an entrepreneur but um, you know I digress again so do that on the spot research you buy up everything you want to buy you throw it in the trunk or in the back seat of your car just like I got shipping boxes I gotta go ship some things out after I leave here cuz I'm actually doing what I'm telling you guys to do this isn't my opinion this is something I actually do um you enjoy the rest of your Saturday and then Saturday evening or maybe Sunday if you have any free time on your Sunday after you do whatever you do on Sundays um, you can clean up the product, take pictures, relist it across multiple platforms. Don't forget to cross list it um, if that platform um, makes sense to distribute your product. So um, it's been times that I had stuff on eBay, Craigslist, OfferUp, and Amazon all at the same time. As soon as it sells, yeah, it might take uh, some extra time because you need to immediately remove it from those other platforms because you don't want to forget and have it sell over here and two days later sell over there and the product's already gone because that makes you look bad on that platform for doing so. But it also, in my experience, it helps stuff sell faster if you have it cross-listed. And I would do that every weekend. That's my advice to you. You'll make $500 to $1,000 a month doing so after you pass that learning curve. So now my camera's dying. I'm going into a meeting. To all my hustlers, stay hustling. JT Hustles, I'm out.